Okay, here we go. We're going to now do a quick little video about chemical and physical properties or changes. Um, and it's pretty interesting to me for the nature of science because when I was a student, I was taught that a chemical change is a change that is irreversible, right? And that's just how we looked at it. If it's something that you really couldn't change very, very easily, it was a chemical change and everything else was physical. So I, we would think, okay, I can melt ice and I can freeze ice. I mean, freeze water back into ice. So that, that's a physical change, easy enough. Um, I can bake a cake and I can't change it back to all the ingredients. That's a chemical change. Uh, but the truth is, it's a little bit more complex than that. <clears throat> chemical changes can be reversed, at least some of them, um, possibly even all of them at this point. It's just, it's a matter of how much energy goes into doing that reversal. And uh, I'm going to give you the definition that I found that I like. It says a chemical change occurs whenever matter changes into an entirely different substance, right? A different composition with different chemical properties. Because chemical changes result in a different substance, they often cannot be undone. Some chemical changes can be reversed, but only by other chemical changes. Okay, so it's not simple. It's not easy to do. And only some, according to this, only some can be reversed. For example, I, I know that we can now boil an egg and then they can reverse the reverse it and make the proteins go back into uh, the liquid egg. And it reform a liquid egg, the yolk. So that's an example that I, I it's crazy. It happened a couple of years ago and um, they did it by accident, but that's how it is. So a chemical change is a change in the composition of that material. So if, if I think of water, H2O, and I melt it down, or if, I'm sorry, if I boil it into air, into, the, into vapor, it's still H2O, just in a gas state. I didn't change the composition, it's still H2O. So therefore, it's, a, it's not a chemical change, that'd be a physical change. <clears throat> As a physical change, the composition stays the same. That water, if I add more water to it, it's still H2O, it's just more of it. So therefore, that doesn't change it. That's still a physical change, and it's increased the volume of it. If I press it and squeeze it right down into its really tiny, tiny, tiny area, and make it really dense, it's still H2O. So therefore, the composition hasn't changed. It's a physical property or a physical change. Um, and most of the physical properties we're, we're, we're thinking about, um, sometimes it's a color change. Um, if we just heat it up or cool it down so that it changes phase, that's going to be a physical change. That's a physical property. When does it melt? When does it boil? Um, the size of it, the volume of it, the density of it, those are almost all going to be, those are physical properties. When we get to the chemical stuff, this is where chemistry is fun, right? That's when we can flammability, reactivity, um, rusting, tarnishing. We actually change something. We Things interact and they make a new substance or new substances, multiple substances. Okay, so how do we know if it's a chemical change if it's not as easy as saying, well, if you can't reverse it, then it's chemical. Well, the best way to do it is to look at what happens during the process, right, when these things come together. Um, is it bubbling, forming a gas? That's a really good indicator that it's... Uh, that it's a chemical change. Of course, we know if we boil water, we'll get some water bubbles in there. That's not the same thing. Okay, that's just the water. That's just the, the water itself escaping, the gas form of water escaping. But a lot of times we'll see bubble or fizzing and sizzling, um, and that's a chance, a good chance that it's a chemical change. Um, if precipitates form, right? Little particles start to form and fall to the bottom. That's a really good sign. Uh, light produced and heat being produced. Those, or a change in temperature, I should say, if it's, if it's going up or down, um, other than just heating it or cooling it with a fire or on a stove. But if we mix two things together and it gets really hot and a flame forms, chemical. Or if it gets really cold and, and starts and freezes something, chemical change. Um, change in smell, because then the different compounds are coming together, right? And we're making, we're making a new substance or we're breaking a substance apart and we're getting each individual substance. Now it, it can change its smell. Um, I would say taste too, but we're never going to taste anything in the science laboratory. But a chemical change can result in a different taste. Um, when we talk about foods, right? When we cook stuff, they change taste. 
Uh, color, temperature, and volume are also can be examples of chemical changes, but they're very easily just the same um, a physical change. For example, if we melt sulfur, it changes color, but it's still just sulfur. It went through a physical change. It just happens that its color is a little different. Um, same with temperature. We freeze water, but that's a physical change. Um, freezing water will also increase the volume of that water, but that's also a physical change. Uh, but other times, it could be a chemical change if we're talking about um, rusting, right? Take metal, we rust it and it flakes away. Now we have a lot less metal there. We've changed the volume of the metal. That's a chemical change. So chemical and physical changes, they can kind of be confusing. Um, I recommend that we just stick to the idea that if it seems really hard to reverse it, it's probably a chemical change. Um, and if, if you didn't change what it is, right? If it's still the same substance or still the same composition, if you can figure out what the compositions are before and after, if the composition hasn't changed, then it's a physical change. If the composition changed, then it's chemical. Have a great day.